Hello, it is time to talk about quote formatting and the MLA rules for using quotes in the body of your essay. There are a lot of different aspects to this, so hang in there and we'll see if we can answer all of your questions. So before starting this lecture, please view the academic argument lecture as well as the lecture on writing a source summary because they're meant to be viewed in order and they refer to each other. In this lecture, we're gonna cover selecting a quote and how to format it depending on how long the quote is, how to punctuate the title of your source and um, various ways for introducing and integrating your quote into your own sentence. We'll also cover briefly adding and deleting words and a couple last tips on the importance of being really careful in how you use these rules. When, when we use the word quote in this class, we're talking about any material that's directly copied from a source. So that's usually text, data, or an image. Um, it's, it's fairly open to interpretation. Um, but the main thing that we're doing is very carefully showing our reader that we are taking information from a source and taking it directly, keeping it pristinely itself and putting it in our own essay. We're, we're using the quotation marks to draw the line between what's our words and what is coming from the source. So there are different uses for quoting a source in your essay. You might use it to define an important concept you might use it to explain a key idea of the source, uh, share a great example. Why not steal their examples, right? Uh, add supporting data or facts to support your argument. What you want to avoid are poorly written quotes or things that are so confusing that they're going to require far more explanation than you have time for. You might as well find a really great quote in the first place. So in the writing a source summary lecture, I selected a quote that presents a key idea from Anne Lamott's piece, and that's what we're going to be using as an example in this lecture. So here are the rules from the Online Writing Lab at Purdue on the definition of a short quotation, and that is four lines or um, fewer of prose or three lines of verse, which is poetry, when you type them into your text. So not how they appear in the source, but how they appear when you type them into your essay. Um, so, and it reminds us of the kind of information that you'll need to be um, adding and the punctuation. So you can see the way that um, you might format it here at the bottom of this slide. And we'll be talking about how to add that parenthetical citation at the end in a later lecture when we deal with works cited pages. So a long or a block quotation is when you type the source material in and it's more than four lines of, of prose or three lines of poetry. So um, it's gonna have a much different structure. It will be in a freestanding block of text. You omit the quotation marks. Um, you start the quotation on a new line with the entire quote indented um, one half inch from the left margin, keep your double spacing. Uh, the parenthetical citation come, uh, should come after closing the, the um, punctuation mark. And um, when quoting verse, you maintain the original line breaks. So that's the basics. And here is part of a, cit part of a citation, although because we're not dealing with um, parentheticals yet, I've, I've omitted that from our example. My one note is if you use a long quote, you better make sure it is all awesome and all of the information is applied to your thesis. You're going to have to explain it all in your essay and you really don't want any padding. We'll be talking later about how you can use an ellipsis to take out the extra material from your quote, which is not helpful for you because you really want to, you don't want to leave your reader with the impression that you have you know, just use this long quote because you can't make the page length. We're better than that, right? When we're getting ready to use our quotation in our source, there's a bunch of information we need to identify. We need to make sure we know who the author is, 
you know, what is the name of the source? What form does it come in? Is in this case, what is the book and what is the chapter? Um, as we discussed earlier, when we were talking about summarizing sources, we need to make sure that we understand our audience and our purpose and that we understand the full context of the quote. We might have to, re you know, refer to, to the source to figure out we absolutely everything that's in the quotation. In MLA, title punctuation follows a certain code, I suppose. And in the new uh, edition of MLA, they use the term container, which I find a little confusing. I've done my best to try to explain it on this slide. A container is something that's published that can hold other things, just like a cup is a container, right? Or a bowl is a container. It's meant to hold smaller items. In this case, in MLA, the container is in italics. So if it's a book, the book title is in italics. If it's an element inside of that container, the book, like a chapter, a short story, a poem, it's going to go in quotation marks. One that we're going to use a lot in this class is a website in italics, the title, it contains web pages. So the, those web pages will be in quotation marks. In my example, we have in the chapter, Shitty First Drafts from her book, Bird by Bird in italics. So now that we have all that information, we can start thinking about how we're going to integrate it into our essay. We need to make sure that the reader knows the author and the source title by the time they read your quote. So that could happen earlier in the, in the, in your essay, or it might happen in this paragraph where you use the quote, if it's the first time you're using that source. Make sure you use the author's full name and for the first time you use it in your essay. And then after that, you can shorten it, but make sure that you use the author's last name when you shorten it. It's too informal just to use their first name. I wouldn't refer to her as Anne. I don't know her personally. I can't call her Anne. Um, I would have to refer to her as Lamott. Also in academia, we don't use Mr. or Mrs. or Ms. Um, you can use doctor. So if she was a doctor, we could call her Dr. Lamott, but we would never call her Ms. Lamott. When you're introducing quotations, uh, you need to make in MLA, you need to make sure that the quotation is in the context of your own sentence. So there are a couple different ways you can do that. You can use a full sentence followed by a colon to introduce the quotation. And note that this is required if you're doing a long or block quotation. So here's my example. Anne Lamott admits that drafting is a messy process, colon. Almost all good writing begins with a terrible first effort. Um, so you can also begin a sentence with your own words, then complete it with the quoted words, like I've done in the next example. Anne Lamott admits that in her experience, almost all good writing begins with terrible first efforts. I've circled here at the end of the quote to highlight where the punctuation goes. So the period goes inside of the quotation marks in this case, when the quotation marks are the last thing in your, in your sentence. The third example is that you can use a signal phrase, sometimes called a tag, to introduce a quotation. And our example is Anne Lamott believes, comma, almost all good writing begins with terrible first efforts. Be sure to take time to choose a really helpful verb, right? So we could say Anne Lamott writes or Anne Lamott states, but, um, how much cooler is it if we can start to add some tone and start to explain how the quotes used, you know, does Anne Lamott deny, does she assert, does she observe, does she, uh, refute, right? So there's all these cool things that you, I, extra ideas that you can start adding in to your essay, just by the verb that you use in introducing your quotation marks. So you can also consider adding or deleting material in order to make your, your quoted, quoted material flow more smoothly in that sentence. So if you want to add words to your quotation, you use square brackets 
around the words to indicate that they're not part of the original text. This is often used to help explain a word that is, um, you know, needing a little bit more context for your reader to understand it. Sometimes it's used to define really vague words like, in this case, let's look at this one, um, Jan Harald Brunvand in an essay on urban legends states, quote, some individuals, here's our square brackets, who retell urban legends make a point of learning every rumor or tale. So we use the square brackets to help our reader understand who the individuals are. Usually this is information that's given before we get to the quotation. And instead of having to quote a whole huge block of material, we use the square bra brackets to describe who those individuals are. Watch for words like it or this or that, those, these, uh, which are so general that oftentimes it's hard for your reader to understand what's being referred to. So square brackets are really helpful. On the other hand, if you need to take something out of, of a quote, then you indicate the deleted word or words by using ellipses, which are three periods preceded and followed by a space. So here's our example. Um, some individuals make a point of learning every recent rumor or tale ellipsis, and in a short time, a lively exchange of details occurs. So a couple things to be careful of when we use ellipses. The resulting sentence needs to sound like a complete sentence and a complete idea like this one does. We can't change the meaning of our quote, right? So it still needs to essentially mean the same thing we've just taken out of detail, which is ir irrelevant to our discussion. All right, in closing, please handle your quotations with care. Along with the source summary, the introduction to your quote will show your reader that you understand the source. And this is the first step in using source ideas correctly to support your thesis and create a convincing argument. Be really extra careful to use the exact spelling and wording of a quotation. If there's a spelling or grammar error in the quotation, add in parentheses SIC after the mistake. And this is this comes from a Latin word that essentially means, yeah, I found it this way. And that way your reader knows that um, you haven't made a mistake in as you've as you've moved that material from the source into your essay. So good luck. We are going to spend the rest of the semester figuring out how to do this well. So hang in there, give it a try. And I look forward to seeing how you're starting to figure out using these rules. Thanks for watching.